Well, Chris, we expected a, a strange evening, a bizarre evening, but maybe not in the way we saw just before half-time. What's your take on the goal that wasn't? I think we all had the feel, uh, both sets of players, both sets of staff. I think even speaking to the referee and, and Chris Cavanagh, who was a fourth official, he had the feel of a, of, of, of a goal. And, um, and obviously, um, quickly relayed back to us. I think the goalkeeper at the time, I think he was in the alt end when he, when he caught it or dragged it back. Um, obviously, just listen to the statement you've given from, from Orkai. Um, my issue is, is, is obviously of, of one of, of, of frustration. Uh, seven cameras haven't picked it up. Uh, the most uh, technical league in the world. Uh, video analysis, pro zone, and everything that we see at every angle, and it hasn't seen uh, a goal, and um, that's disappointing from our point of view. You know, we went to to Tottenham last year, and I suppose it's nothing really to do with the, the timing of it. You know, John Lundstrom, big toe was offside, and I'm, I'm, I'm hanging around at White Hart Lane uh, in the pouring rain for 10 minutes waiting for a decision. Um, so I don't really understand why. I, I couldn't have waited around for another 10 minutes in Birmingham when it was raining for another decision. But uh, Statements come out, unprecedented as they talk about, unbelievable. Uh, I did have a bit of a laugh and a joke, would you believe, today that, because we feel, well, like, imagine a, a, lot, a lot of the Premier League clubs have had decisions go against them and we've had some pretty poor ones go against us. And uh, I did say uh, I won't bet against us, have it been uh, uh, the, the first one to, to go against us and it's, it certainly has uh, this evening. Do you accept the reasons given, the technology just hasn't worked, or are you looking at that? It seems like a hint of what you're saying is, why hasn't a human intervened? Why hasn't VAR got involved? Is it that clear? Well, that's what I've said, you know, um, I, that's the balance, isn't it? We were, wait, we were waiting for somebody, I don't know who, who it was at, at Stockley Park, to, to show, show a bit of courage and stick the chest out and say, well, I'll make that decision. Um, but if they're saying that they've not seen it and seven cameras haven't seen it, then I suppose he's going to say he can't make that decision. Uh, but uh, I've always said, um, you know, the balance. I I'm, uh, in a way, 45,000 people in here. That would have been pretty difficult to take for, well, possibly 5,000 of our supporters if, uh, if that was disallowed. But um, there it is, unprecedented, seven cameras. Um, really strange afternoon, evening, really strange. Quite difficult as well. Um, you know, I think we should never underestimate the effect of, uh, of playing in front of supporters ever again will be because that was quite difficult for both sets of players. It was certainly difficult myself and Dean and John Terry and Alan. Um, and, uh, and yet again, uh, most probably we would have been talking about a pretty average game, uh, but we're not. We're talking about um, a, a decision that's, uh, that's uh, obviously affected in a way, the, the result. Can you just expand on why it was difficult? Obviously, a totally unusual set of circumstances with no fans in. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I completely understand the reason. To, to, I've been biggest advocate for us to get back to work and, and, and playing, but we were all going into the unknown today. Uh, I thought the tempo would have been a little bit better, a little bit quicker, um, maybe because obviously the, the, the amount of time that we've had, we'd had off. I just think that the vibe and the buzz of, 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 of playing in it. I love coming to this place. We've had some brilliant games here recently, you know. Even though we, we were freeing up with 10 minutes ago last year and, uh, and they pegged us back, it was a, it's a brilliant atmosphere. We, the year before, we drew two each. We've had some great battles with Steve Bruce's Villa and, and obviously Dean's Villa now, a uh, club that I've got a huge amount of respect for. Um, but just double difficult to. To I don't know. You're never going to replicate, are you? When, when, there's the, when there's nobody in the ground. Just wanted to ask you about what happened at the start of the game. Incredibly powerful statement by the players. Everyone, yourself, involved uh, on both sides, taking the knee. Um, when did you hear about it, and why did you think it was bit important to be involved in that? Well, the statement was was made uh, in conjunction and and, uh, and, and, and a combination of uh, both boards, both CEOs, uh, both managers, both sets of players, captains and everything. And, um, and obviously the details in, in, in the statement, I don't want to go too, too deep into it, but you know, it was an opportunity for, 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 uh, for both sets of football clubs, especially with the first game on, to, to, make, that, to make that statement, which I, I think they did impeccably and got on. It was a difficult, like I said, difficult evening to play, to play a game of football, but um, 
they're all committed um, to uh, to what's happened, and I think you know the detail of it as well, because you know everybody wanted to respect as well of what what's happening, you know, with the pandemic in the country as well, and not take anything away from the from the minute silence as well. So it's important that we got the balance right from uh, from both sets of football clubs, and I think both sets of pro- football clubs have got the balance right, and uh, and hopefully now you know from from our point of view, um, it's. Um, We've made we've we've both made that statement.